people. They take the field at Belmore for their first Winfield Cup match at home in front of the Prime Minister and the Canterbury Bankstown are out there now to do battle with the Balmain side. Victorious, as I said, over Western Suburbs in their opening encounter. The Dogs without Terry Lamb and without Bruce McGuire, who was a late withdrawal from the Canterbury side. Let's, in fact, have a look at the entire side for the Blue and Whites. At fullback, Ewan McGrady, the wingers are Paul Doolan and Matthew Ryan. In the centres, Darren Smith and Troy Clark. The halves are Glenn Hughes and Kevin Moore. From the back of the scrum forward, it's Steve Reardon. Gavin Hill comes on in 41 with Simon Gillies. Dean Pay, Robert Ralph and Mark Brokenshire. And, of course, they're coached by Chrissy Anderson. The Balmain side taken out by Blocker Roach, their new captain, in 1992. An awesome appearance about their forward lineup. And let's have a look at this Balmain side that is going to represent them tonight. Brian Smith is out of the team, but at fullback, it's Gary Jack, former Australian fullback. On the wings are Clint Robinson and Tim Brasher. The centres are Ian McCann and Jason Sinclair. The halves, Will Robinson and David Baysari going into the number seven jumper. And then the scrummers, Marcella, John Elias, Paul Sirenen, Steve Edmed, Benny Elias, and Steve Roach. And of course, they're coached by Alan Jones. Ben Elias, one of the key players in this match, and very much in pursuit in 1992 of that green and gold jumper back. Ian McCann, the tall centre. Playing with Jason Sinclair in the centre. Oh, charge down! Chance here for the Bulldogs. Away from Gillies. It's gone on and through Reardon. It's out now. They're going to put it down for Troy Clark. Troy Clark goes all the way. And Canterbury, they've come out with all guns blazing. Racing to a six points to nil lead. And there's still more to come. Yes, a, a big play here for Canterbury. Gary Jack had taken the ball up the previous two rucks he was on the left hand side nowhere to be seen getting back in cover now a bit late and the canterbury support came from everywhere Paul robinson did well in the chase but a good try to troy clark under the sticks and not often we see ben elias kicks charge down really didn't get any height on it but uh, a great piece of work there from robert ralph to get the hand up gillies cleaned up was able to pick up plenty of support steve reardon was involved ralph once again and troy clark an easy run to the line that's a great start for the bulldogs a, a great confidence booster They'll lead. Very dangerous, but as Peter Sterling said, mainly when Steve Roach gets back and comes onto the ball, and Paul Sirenen and Steve Edmed have probably got to do the same thing. If Balmain had a comeback from this 8 0 deficit, Matthew Ryan tackled by Will Robinson and Ian McCann. Moore, Reardon. And he gets a pass away. It'll go all the way with Darren Smith. He gets it down. Canterbury's second try. Darren Smith. Well, how easy was that? Very simple blind side, blind side play there by the Canterbury Bulldogs. They found a bit of space right down the touchline. Steve Reardon here just does very well, draws a couple of players in. Sirenen had him covered. I felt the winger didn't have to come in. He should have stayed on Smith, and Smith showed a lot of pace. A big right foot step. And the cover came over in McCann, but too late, and a good try to Darren Smith. Well, Clint Robinson might have scored two tries last week, but I think he certainly allowed one here. Paul Sheeran did have the inside man covered. Steve Reardon went in, and both went low, so that the player was able to get his arms free. Darren Smith, plenty of speed, some good evasion at the end, got out of the Gary Jack tackle, and, uh, well, what a start for Canterbury. They're taking on the more illustrious names from Balmain, but at the moment they're doing a mighty fine job of it. McGrady... Here goes that kick again, off the outside of the boot, but a long run for Gary Jack. He comes back from his 10-metre line. He's lost it. Well, Clint Robinson's got to try and clean up. Canterbury, they're going in to score again. Robert Ralph. Ralph puts it down, and Canterbury have scored their third try. Oh, Balmain are bumbling their way through Friday night football. Yes, mistake after mistake after mistake, and here's another one. Gary Jack bringing the ball back. Another deep kick by McGrady, a great kick. And Gary Jack, that's a great tackle there. Trying to get the ball. Clint Robinson couldn't get it. The ball was towed through here and picked up. And Ralph, you beauty, 15-metre run, no one in front of him. 16-0.
Well, seconds earlier we'd spoken about a kicking game. Gary Belcher pointed out that that was the big play in the Canterbury side was the kick and chase. Some good defence there from Ralph. Look, he was on the ground. He got up off the ground to reclaim this, and that, that's great work. He's, he's had a very impressive start, this young hooker, keeping Geordie Peets out of the side. And 16 points to nil hard. I guess we've got a minute to go. Balmain really have to use the ball now. They've got to throw it around. They've got to back up. They've got to go forward. Only a minute to go on the clock. Will Robinson across the park for John Elias. Floats it out there. Clint Robinson gets the pass back for McCann. He takes it to ground. 25 metres out from the line. Seconds remaining in the game. Will Robinson put down by Gillies. Over the top, Darren Smith. Played by Will Robinson. Now it's Sinclair. Launches himself at the defence. Right on the 22. Well, they've got to go blind. They've got nobody back this way. Serenan gets it back for John Elias. Now for Benny Elias. Masella. Masella runs into the defence. They've lost ground. Five tackles gone. Seconds to go in the second edition of Friday Night Football. Benny Elias goes to the air. Taken by Kevin Moore and safely. And that should just about get Canterbury home. Well, Alan Jones thinks that's the case. He's walking down now. Great take there from Kevin Moore, but very good play from the number four, Troy Clark. Gave him good protection. Didn't allow the chaser to get through and, and Colin Moore. You see here, it's a good protection. Tim Brash is the best chaser in the Balmain side. He couldn't get through. It's been a great performance by Candy every night. We all wrote them off. But the young the young lines in their side, Gillies, Craig Relf, and Steve Reardon at the, the back of the scrum have all played out of their skins and they've all been outstanding tonight. Darren Smith out wide, Matthew Ryan, they've all done their part. Been a good win for them. Moore taking it out on one of the last tackles. In fact, that is the last tackle. The referee didn't hear it originally. He signifies that's the end of the game. And Canterbury Bankstown have defeated Balmain, who started a warm favourite in this match tonight, by 20 points to 16. Tremendous effort, as Paul Vorton just summarised. And some of these young Canterbury players, they took the field without Terry Lamb, without Bruce Maguire. They've still got Jared McCracken out suspended. But they've come to this Belmore sports ground tonight inspired by a big home crowd and they've taken the match and the two Winfield Cup points 20 points to 16 we'll be back with the man of the match and Ken Sutcliffe with Peter Sterling shortly on Gonna have a good surprise winners over Balmain in Friday Night Football a travesty of justice had they not won Peter Sterling because they played the better well they hung in there right to the death and over the full 80 minutes they were the better side played with a lot of enthusiasm which they needed to do with Terry Lamb not there and of course Bruce Maguire a late withdrawal what about the Balmain mistakes well Alan Jones you know you must be wondering why is a coach going through that torture out there overall you know Balmain played some great football in patches but that was punctuated by too many mistakes and in the end it cost them dearly. And those young Canterbury centres pulled off a couple of crucial tackles. Well, very late fatigue had set in and they did come up with some, as you say, some crucial tackles. It looked as though Balmain were getting on top in that final five or ten minutes. But, um, you know, they came up with the defence when it was needed. And I think that, you know, the right result for everybody, an important two points for the Bulldogs. And right now, down in the dressing rooms, is Ray Warren with the man of the match. Yes, I'm with the man of the match out of the game, Ken, of course, Simon Gillies, an outstanding performance, plenty of tackles, plenty of hit-ups. How do you feel about all of that? Oh, well, it was one of those games, wasn't it? It was just uh, plenty of tackles, plenty of hit-ups game after we got a few points on the board. When you came here tonight, obviously, you would know that Balmain were a warm favourite. What was the feeling in the sheds? Uh, we just approached the same game, like... Every week we just go out there, that we're the favourites. We don't worry about the, all the paper talk that goes on. Simon, you came to Sydney from Yanko Agricultural. I mean, it's a school that has produced plenty of good footballers. And uh, you won the University Shield, I think, in the year you played with them. Yes, we, uh, in 87. Seems a long time ago now, but uh, we got up that year. Yeah, it's a good school, great school. 20 points to 16, you fell across the line for victory. The trainers were working overtime. There were plenty of tired players out there at the finish. Yeah, I, if I could have lifted my hand, I think I would have. OK, Simon, congratulations, man of the match. Thank you. There it is, Ken Simon Gillies taking out our award tonight as we take it back to you.
Thanks very much, Ray. No argument there, Peter Sterling. Simon Gillies. No, the most impressive part about his game was that when they got tied, he still led the charge. I thought he was absolutely outstanding. Let's now take a look at what happened in the lower grades, played obviously early before the main match. Round two, reserve grade, Canterbury 24, Balmain 8 in the President's Cup. Canterbury 35, Balmain 2. Now, let's take a look at footy tab. Pick the score, two games tonight. Canterbury 20, Balmain 16. That's our Friday night football match, of course. $170.20. North's 22, South's 8. And that game paid $81.80.